What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech. Today we're going to be working on a project called Image. So if you're not familiar, Image is a self-hosted app or program that you can run off of Docker and it's going to create a self-hosted picture storage similar to Google Maps or iCloud. It uses an app where you can put on your phone. It's available on Google Play or the App Store that you can put on your phone and you can sync up the selected photos and save it straight to your your image share on your home lab or wherever you're running it. It's fully free, there's no paywalls, and today we're gonna go in how to set it up and get everything going, so let's do that right now. So probably about four or five months ago, I was interested in trying to step back from all the subscription stuff like Google Photos, iCloud, and stuff like that, and in that process, I found Image. Image was highly recommended. A lot of people really like it. The only downfall that I had was that you have to run it out of Docker. They don't have like a native install for Linux or anything else. So at the time, I really wasn't interested in running on Docker. And it's also, as it states right here on the top of the site, it's v under very active development. So it's not the most reliable thing you can use at this point. Right here on their GitHub, they do have a disclaimer saying that the project is very active under development there are bugs and there might be stuff that breaks it and do not use the app as the only way to store your photos and videos if you're offloading your pictures from your phone let's say and you're going to bank on image being the only place to store it it does not recommend doing that it recommends following the 321 backup plan or at least cloning them over to another drive that's more reliable to use just in case something breaks an image and you lose everything you don't want that to happen Coming back over to the site, I mean, image is pretty cool. You can see the UI is nice. Um, it, it looks very similar to Google Photos, but it's self-hosted. It has all the features that you want, like geolocating. It can recognize people. It has a nice app. And it's all self-hosted and free. There's no paywalls behind it. So I, I think I was heading on it, but unfortunately, the only way to install image currently is through Docker. I mean, you can install it through, like, Unray. They have a way to do it with a repo, and I think uh, Truna is probably too. But unfortunately, you have to run it out of a Docker container. There's no like native install on Linux or like an LXC container just yet. So for the requirements of this project to set it up, it's going to require a OS of Linux. So you can use Ubuntu or Debian. It does say that you could use Windows or Mac OS. You could use the WSL on Windows, but we're going to make it easier and just run it off of Docker right off of Linux. The minimum for memory is four gigs, but it says you can use six. I actually have eight gigs to my Docker machine. and It seems to be running pretty well two cores minimum or recommended a four it's kind of high requirements for a docker machine but this this stack of image does run a lot it has a machine learning container and it has the other containers that run the actual image and the postgres database like i was saying over here on the left we have some different ways to do it there's TrueNAS, synology there's unraid but today we're going to be working with portainer they have the docker compose but i don't really like using the command line i like using the gui so we're going to use Portainer. It's super simple. And today that's how we're going to be setting this up. To start off, we're going to go with that you already have Docker and Portainer set up. I have a fresh instance of Docker and Portainer. I use the Pi self-hosted guide from Nova Spirit. If you're interested in how to set this up, I'll have a card up in the corner to a video of how to get this all running. And then you can come back and you can set up image with us. So over here is the guide. If you click over here to the GitHub repo, it actually downloads the file. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to click up here in the top bar and we're going to have the GitHub over here and we do need the docker compose.yaml file. So if we come over to here, you can see I have the docker. And then in here, there's the docker compose.yaml. So this is the actual file that we're going to be using to set up. So just coming back over here, our, our steps are pretty simple. We just need to go into Portainer, and then we're going to create a stack. So I'm just going to come over here. We're going to come to stacks. And then over here on the right, we have add stack. We're going to be making a custom stack for our Docker container. We can just call it image because that's what it's going to be. And now over here we have some options we're going to be using the web editor so this is actually what they specify in the guide over here so we're going to come over to the github once more and over here i'm just going to copy the entire file make sure that you're using the docker compose.yaml you don't want to be using the wrong file and then we can come back to our portainer instance and just paste everything in now the only thing we do need to do and it's specified over here in the guide is there's this dot env tag we need to change this to stack.env. So over here, you can see it's like an N file right here. We just need to put stack. 
And then there's one more and we just need to put stack there as well. So after we get all that done, super simple, we just need to scroll down to environments, variables, and then there's advanced mode. So over here, we just need to paste in the environmental variables we're going to be using. So once more, they have it over here linked, and it's just going to be the copy of the example.env. So if we come back to the GitHub, you can actually see right below it, it's over here, and it's super short. We could just copy this whole. And then we can come over to once more and we could paste all this in. So you see it was a whole bunch of text and now it just cut it all out because this is going to be just the simple tags that we need. So at this point to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to SSH into my Linux machine that's running Docker, which is the one we're currently working off of. And we're going to grab some file paths. So I'll be right back. So I just came over here and SSH into my box that's running Docker for me. Now, if you're running the Pi host template, you're going to have the similar file paths to me after you deploy your first container. If not, you could use whatever file paths you want to use. So I'm just going to do CD portainer files, app data config. Yeah. Config. And then over here, you can see I have my path. So I could just do a quick dir. You see there's archive box and portainer. That's fine. So if you're following along with the self-hosted guide to set up your Docker, you can see over here, our file path is portainer files, app data config. This is the path the template uses to install the Docker containers in. So this is the one that I'm going to use for my image stack. So I'm just going to copy this out and you don't want the money sign. We're going to come over here to these environmental variables we were making and we're going to paste in. You want to keep the period. So then we're going to put another slash in. I'm going to do image and then I'm going to do upload. So what this is going to do is going to make the file path we need to actually be able to upload our photos. And then once again, we need to do our database location. So I'm going to paste that in one more time. Make sure you keep the period. We're going to do slash image again, and then I'm going to do DB. So now this again, will make the database that we need for our image container. Now, the only thing over here you might want to do is if you want to change the password to the database and the database name. I'm going to keep everything default because that works fine for me. But if you want to change it, you could change it. Other than that, we're all set. Now we can click deploy stack. Now, this is going to take a few minutes because it is going to deploy three or four containers like I was saying. And it's right now from the custom template. So just give it some time and then it'll come up. And after a couple of minutes, the stack will be all set up and you can actually come over here and you can click on it. And you can see here's the four containers that run with it. So they are starting currently and they are going to take a couple minutes to start up because like I said, they're, they're running a lot. So we'll give this time to come up and so they're all green, but you can see everything's all set up. This image server is going to be our main one that we're working with. And then you can come over here when it's up and running and they have the network ports. You can see right now it, it's not working. So that's fine. If you get this error where it's saying zero, 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 because you're a fresh Docker install, that's fine. All you need to do is come over to environment related environments, click on the local, and then over here where it has public IP, you just need to put in the IP of your Docker box. So mine is dot 88, whatever yours is, is going to be right up here. And you can just put that in. We're going to click update environment. And now we should be all set. So now if I come back to my home, I have my local stack, we have my five containers and you can see they're all running. Or if you want, you can see it from the stack as well. Either way, they both work. So I'm gonna come over here and now you can see everything's green and running. So I'm just gonna come over here. I'm gonna click to open this up again. And you can see now it has the right IP and now we have get started. So we're just gonna click get started. And here you just need to register yourself an account. So I'm gonna do that and we'll be right back. So I just registered really quick. So you could just type in your email for your account and then your password and it's going to log you in for the first time it's going to go over some of the settings so you can pick our theme of course i want the darker theme because the light theme is just way too bright as always we're going to go to next it's going to talk about privacy you can limit your privacy if you want it also has a storage template if you want to change how the storage is done you can read into this but i'm going to keep it default because that's what's recommended and then from there, we're all set to go. So now the image stack is all deployed, everything's working, and now you can start to upload pictures. And there actually is the apps on the App Store and the Google Play Store, like I was saying. So you could download it on your phone and you can link your app to the server. So you could upload right off your phone and back up off your phone. It works really well. And you could just have a backup and have a web viewer of your pictures. So I'm just gonna upload a couple pictures just so you can see how it populates and then we'll be right back. 
So I uploaded a couple of pictures and you can see that they're all set, they're uploading, they actually have date tags so we can see that they're back from 2017 and 2016. And if you want to upload pictures through the web portal, it's super simple, there's just an upload button up here in the top right. It's going to open up wherever you want to go in File Explorer. So if I want to, let's say, upload when I did the build for my server, you can see that it says it's successful, you just need to up refresh the page. And now over here, we can see here's when I was building out my server, there's the motherboard that I was using. And we have the picture viewer so we can actually go through and you can see this is my old Jeep that I used to have back when I was in high school. And there was just some pictures I had of it on my computer. So it takes some time to map it because it has to read through the, the metadata and the pictures. It'll start to geolocate your pictures so wherever they were taken, the metadata states, you'll actually be able to see it tagged on the map, which is pretty cool. It'll also go through and it'll be able to try to identify people that are in pictures. So like under the explore tab, it'll start to bring up like recommended people and you can click through there and it'll tag the pictures that they have. You can share your albums out with people. You can make people accounts so other people could use this as well. Uh, th this is a bare bones. We just set it up so it's not really going to have much to show. A feature that I do like is that you can review duplicates. So if you do have multiple pictures, it will detect it. So if I do come back over here and I, I click to upload a picture really quick, like the server picture over here, now you can see over here, it's actually going to tell me it errored because it's a duplicate. So it's not going to let that picture go through. Nice feature. You don't have multiple of the same picture available on, you know, taking up space. But that's image. It's super simple to set up. Like I said, the, the developers really did a great job. They really did a great job setting up that Docker file and their guide to make the install super simple. I mean, you only have to change four lines and you're all set to go. The, the app works really nicely and so does the web app. So I'm really satisfied with this project. I'm interested to see how it continues to develop because this might be my alternative to saving some of my pictures locally and then being able to save them other places like on my NAS. So I have multiple backups just in case anything ever happens. Uh, currently I do have everything saved iCloud. I'd imagine that iCloud is going to be pretty reliable. That also I'm not going to lose everything, but you never know. I'd rather have more backups of my pictures than I need. But like I said, that's really it for image. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Uh, maybe you're going to set up image yourself and start running it on your home lab. I want to thank you all for watching. As always, I'll have links to all the gear in my home lab down below. If you ever want to check any of it out and get it for yourself, I'll have a link to the discord server. If you want to join up, we can chat about home lab projects or anything that's going on. And other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.